after you have built the right environment and warmth and everything mashallah is is harmonically going and everything is beautifully gone it's time now to build the ties and bridges with them you've created the environment for them now is the time to actually build a relation one to one or one to two or three to one whatever but you need to build a relationship with them all one thing that all my children eight children will tell you when you ask them who does your dad love more they ain't gonna tell you xyz but i have a disabled child muad who is now 22 or 23 my younger daughter uh, latifa always tells me that i know you have extra compassion for him but you love us all the same and I always am ever thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. So the healthiest thing for them to actually want to love you and listen to you and acknowledge and do what every one of them is that you love them equally to their brothers and sisters, and especially with the newborn baby. And if you have one child or two child and you are pregnant for the love of Allah, don't hide the pregnancy process. I hated it with every single bone in, in my youth when I was a little kid. My mother was there and then suddenly one day we have this little lump of meat in the bed and you go, what's that? They go, that's your brother and sister. And you go, where did you bring it from? I used to think when I was a little kid that they used to steal them from hospital. Only later on that they have been concealing for the nine months. What the heck is going on here? This is the evil poison of culture. But Alhamdulillah, I reversed all the process. My children took an active role in their brothers and sisters in the womb of their mother from beginning to the end. As soon as we knew there was a little creature inside mommy, everybody knew about it and everybody was happy. And we got into the discussion, is it a boy or a girl? And we get into this kind of things. And then it's a long waiting trail for all of us, the nine months. And by the time the baby is in the hospital, everybody else is extremely happy and welcoming the baby. This is the art of building ties and bridges with your kid and here is I'm gonna share with you the art of creating ties and building bridges with your children number one build their self-esteem never ever criticize never ever if you tell them one plus one equals what and they say seven you go you are right if we take one one like you take one and you cut it into six and you add the other one, they will make seven pieces. But sweetheart, what I am on right now is we take this one here and this one here, we don't cut them, but we add them both. What does that mean? Oh, they go, oh, that's two. You know what you have done here? You've given them a world full of openness that, sweetheart, it's okay to make a mistake. With time, they're gonna find out that they made a mistake, but you didn't point the sword to their throat you actually absorbed the error and turned it into something beautiful so build their self-esteem and the way to do that is to never ever criticize them if you want to correct or teach them always acknowledge with a smile if your child makes a mistake and you know it's a mistake don't tell him no it's wrong no turn and this is also another thing that my children will tell you about me. I'd be busy doing whatever I'd be doing. The moment they say, Dad, I will put anything in my hands and I will turn physically face them as is the sin of Rasulullah and I smile and I go, yes. That's why they kept always nagging me, Dad, Dad, Dad. And I kept always saying, yes, 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 yes. And when I am extremely busy and I tell them, look, I am busy. I'll talk to you when I finish and they would understand and respect that. So what you want to do is acknowledge with a smile whatever it is. Even if it's the dumbest error, but to your child is not the dumbest error. That's who they are. The knowledge has not yet reached them. Acknowledge with their great input. Whatever your child does, as he she is learning and this is absolutely great that your child is making error because it's by making errors that we learn how many plane crashes have we witnessed how many human humans have we lost before we could fly safely how many how many how many gazillions upon gazillions also if you want to educate offer options don't dictate results offer options through multiple choice questions 
For example, you tell the kid, you tell him, okay, sweetheart, 10 plus 2 equals what? And he goes 9, or he goes 11. Now you can tell him, no, it's wrong, it's 12. You have negated and you have pinpointed. The best thing to do is go, okay, I'm going to give you a multiple choice question. It's either 9, 14, 11, or 12. Because sometimes what happens is the child knows the answer. It just the, the words do not match what's in the mind and he says something wrong. This happens to you. Sometimes you go, it's in my tongue and I can't get it out. But the child can't know that as yet. So he throws in any answer and sometimes the word he says is different than what's in his mind. But once you give them multiple choice questions, you have opened the flood to knowledge. Number two, uh, number three, in the self, building the self-esteem, compliment regardless of the outcome. My daughter Latifah, Rahima, and any one of them, I never ever put them down when it comes to learning. And I always tell them it's okay to make mistakes because, because this is how we learn. We humans, it's okay to make sin as long as we repent because that's how we learn. And I explained that to them, and alhamdulillah, it works like a breeze. Use that, you'll win a lot. Number two, in the building of the ties and bridges, teach them leadership. Yeah, from the very young age. How would you do that? Ask them questions about things they like. Ask them to teach you. For example, if the child likes to play with the iPad, tell them, sure, what do you like about the iPad? I'm sure you know a couple of things that I don't know. Tell me what you know and teach me what you know. You know what you have done here? Not only have you injected self-esteem, you have given them a position of power. Someone who will teach and he will be able or she will be able to address the public later on. Confidence you build in them. If they are reading a book, Sweetheart, what do you like so far about this book? Teach me about what you read. Tell me about something. I'm sure I'm going to learn something from you. And watch how the confidence and the leadership skills of your child will grow exponentially. Number three, make them part of the decision making in matters of the house. We used to have this meeting, a monthly meeting or sometimes well, once every eight weeks, as to how we would like the furniture, how we would like the lounge to look, what kind of uh, painting are we going to paint the wall, the light, I used to like the light at home, what kind of light do we have, what do you think, where should we go in vacation, what food do we want to eat today. And I'm, we all gather around the table and we make a decision. I'll have a pen or sometimes I delegate get one of the children to write and we write the agenda, the points that we are going to discuss, and we do a meeting. And then, once we get what we want from the meeting, I delegate tasks to the person, and then each one of them has got its own job, and alhamdulillah, the planning business, and other things, even with my children, when I speak to them on the phone, and you go, what's your daily plan today? And they go, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth. And so, please, please involve them in the decision, making process hey we want to go and visit your granny and grandfather when do you think guys you think we should go and let the kids speak it's okay you don't and you're not obliged to do what they say but at least you are teaching them to be part of the decision making things number four develop with them a bad time stories create in them a stories addiction I did that with all my children, alhamdulillah, but with Rahim and Latifa, particularly the 13 and the 9 years old, one they were about 5 and the, the other one was about 8. I started with them the story, bad story, like half an hour from pre-Adam's creation, alayhi salam, until the life of the Sahaba and beyond. So much so that Latifa, last year when she was eight, she reads books and alhamdulillah, she came to me with her book and she goes, Dad, and I go, yeah, she goes, in this book, this is a mistake here. Why she, they read that uh, when the Prophet sallallahu was migrating, Allah put on his, on the cave, a spider and a pigeon. And she came to me and she goes, Dad, this is wrong. It didn't happen like that. And I was so thrilled. How did subhanAllah remember it? Even now, when I talk, I mention a story about a prophet. She straightway looks me up. This is a nine years old. And she goes, yes, I know, I know, I know. This is, this is, this is. 
They even know the, the stories of the people that have reverted to Kufr after Rasulullah died and the expeditions and the battles and Musaylim al kathab and Al-Aswad Al-Anzi and Shaja and Suja. All these people may be the first time you hear of them, but Latifa knows them for the last four years. So please create an addiction to tell them stories before bed. It works wonders, mashallah, on their intelligence, on their knowledge, on everything. And you teach them also and you link them with Islam. Storytelling, my brothers and my sisters, enhances your child's imagination exponentially to no end. Smartphone, tablet, PlayStation, or all these things, they kill imagination and they constrain creativity. The child crea it creates in him an element of fusion of emotions. Anger, fear, shoot, kill, all these things. But when you put them in the bed and you start telling them stories about the past and now and link it to prophets, it's unbelievable how beautiful the mind works with them. So please, please, please work in developing in your child imagination with what? Storytelling. And this is how you gotta look. Don't put your kid into bed without telling him a story. I'll tell you why. The brain throughout the day gathers data of what's going on here and there and everything. At night when you go to sleep and the mind goes to rest, he hands over the, your physical activities to the spine. So the spine will take care of your scratching, your tossing, all that kind of stuff. The subconscious starts fighting the information of what is important to you. The subconscious will start always with what is the latest you want to bed with. So as soon as you get in bed, the subconscious will be handed over the stories of the prophet. Your subconscious will straightway consider what you did before bed as important and it is fresh. And this is why it stays in the mind of your child until eternity comes or your child dies, whichever comes first. Number five, engage them with sports and activities and also engage them in activities that matters to the intellectual. If you don't plan, your children won't plan. If you don't read, your children won't read. If you don't do the sunnah at home, the kids won't play the sunnah at home. If you are not sporty, the kids are not sporty. And so on and so forth. I used to live in Fulham and uh, the mother would pick up the kids back then and uh, she'd drive to Richmond and that is about uh, seven miles. And I would go and run from Fulham to Richmond seven miles. And then and I meet them there and then I play with them soccer and then we come home all in the car. My kids grew up seeing their dad sporty and alhamdulillah that is helping a lot. So as I said, engage them with sports activities, intellectual activities, play educational games with them like Monopoly or other family games. Take them to the library. Honestly, take them to the library. I do love that. I take my kids to the library and I tell them, this is the kids' uh, library as in foils in Charing Cross. Not the, or you go to the public library, whichever. I go there and I do this for two reasons. One, it's good to educate the kids to love the library, read and things like that. And also, I see what interests my kids, what kind of books they read. It gives me an opportunity to buy them gifts. So if I see them reading books about the planes, I go, uh-huh, okay, we've got an idea. Thank you very much, sir. You've given me an idea for your next gift. And then I buy a gift, whatever, a plane or a book about planes. And the girls, what, okay, what is she reading? I see she's reading something about that. All right, I'll get her that. That's it. They give you ideas. Kids talk to us every single day about how much they love and what they love. And it is just us who don't pay attention to them. Please do that and involve them in activities that involve the brain and sports. Create a daily Salat manager at home. If you have two or three kids and create a manager. Today the adhan is on you. You're the responsible of the adhan. Obviously, you don't want to kill them if they forget or they things like that. It's always about remember what I said at the beginning. Acknowledge. Acknowledge their thing. And then slowly help them to become the best of who they can be. Also, my dear brothers and my sister, don't get rid of them by learning them or just giving them the iPhone or your tablet to play. They will like playing with the iPhone and they will like playing with the tablet. And they will know when you want a me time, they're going to ask you for them. But that creates isolation. It creates isolation in the home. And I am sure 
your child will become isolated because he'll be too much in his little world on her little world and it is something that i strongly do not recommend involve your kids in physical activities intellectual activities it is okay to let them play games but for example have them play games one hour a day and that'll be it don't make the whole day play of games and don't think by them sitting there and playing games you are doing good you actually are damaging their creativity you are damaging their emotions you are damaging their social skills in interacting with people and this is why today teenagers they don't have <laughs> they have more friends in the technical world are like uh, games and things like that than real friends encourage them and this is number six encourage them to read by reading in front of them subhanallah my brother sit on the sofa let your wife put her head on your knees or put your her head against your chest and she reads a book and you read a book and watch what the kids will do put a couple of books in front of you and the kids will say ha dad and mom are having a good time reading well i'll do just that but if they don't never ever see you reading anything and you expect them to start reading you'll be a fool your honesty will be a fool and if they forget don't make a big fuss out of it if they don't listen don't yell and don't make a big fuss out of it when they don't listen to you you know what's happening it's only them saying look you have done this before you've asked me before and it i have built resistance to it find different ways to communicate one thing i have always done with my kids is the idea of copy that or roger that or tayyib i i, I always say tayyib whenever i tell them something for example i wanted to clean the room yes copy that okay tayyib and they will say yeah tayyib or yes abi or whatever have this thing copy that roger and uh, 10 40 you remember thunderbirds are go it's beautiful series have a sit down and watch it with them and learn uh, uh, fab and things like that so teach them on communication skills and help them become better.